Alright, in this video we're going to be looking at the alcohol, so the hydroxyl functional group, the OH. Now in this topic there isn't really that many mechanisms, it's a lot more of the, the house science you work stuff in terms of the use of alcohols, why, where we get them from, um, more or less that's it, it's fairly straightforward. So we'll start off with some basic naming, just quickly recap. I'm just going to leave sticks, but fairly straightforward. Count your longest carbon chain first. So F carbons are single bonded to each other. So F an and the the alcohol there. We give this carbon number one. So with ethanol, it can only take the number one. So it would you'd be fine just saying ethanol as most people do. But I would say get into the habit of showing the number for where the actual alcohol group stuck. Because if you had propanol, well, propanol wouldn't exist. You would need to say either propan-1-ol or propan-2-ol. Since it could be either carbon-1 or carbon-2. Um, in terms of the alcohols, obviously you have got a homologous series there. Ethanol, propan-1-ol, butan-1-ol, etc. all the way down. You could get asked, are they primary, secondary or tertiary? Because the reactions of the alcohols will be different depending on that. So as you've done for the haloalkanes and so forth, it's exactly the same for this. So you look for the carbon which has got the actual alcohol group stuck on it. And then count how many carbons are stuck directly to it. So in our case here, yeah, one carbon stuck onto this carbon with the OH. So that would be a primary alcohol. If I do this, that is now a secondary alcohol. Two carbons join directly to the carbon with the alcohol group. As I said, you need to know that because they will react differently. In terms of the physical properties of the alcohols, their melting point, boiling point is a little bit higher than alkanes of a similar mass. Reason for that. We have got the ending here, which can form hydrogen bonds. So again, links back to Chem 1. You've got a big electronegativity difference between the oxygen and hydrogen. You've got lone pairs on the oxygen there. So if there is any other ethanols or water about, things like that, then you can have interaction between the delta positive of a hydrogen floating and the lone pair on there. Likewise, if there is any lone pairs on, say, a nitrogen floating about, they can interact with the, the delta positive on the hydrogen. So the small chain, alcohine, alca the small chain alcohols are fairly soluble in water as well because they can hydrogen bond and interact with it. As the chain gets longer, though, and obviously all these non-polar carbons keep extending off, then the solubility does drop quite dramatically as your, your non-polar part becomes much bigger than the polar end bit here. Now in terms of how to make alcohols, one you can sort of do a, a nucleophilic substitution using the hydroxide ion on say chloropropane, one chloropropane, anything like that. So just straightforward, switch the OH for the halogen. The second method, so starting from the alkenes, which you looked at last topic. Um, so I'll just write it out generally like that. So you need sulfuric acid, that is there acting as a catalyst. The water here is going to be acting as a hydrolysis reaction. So the difference between hydration and hydrolysis, hydration you just add water, but hydrolysis we are going to use the water to actually crack open and break that double bond in the alkene and it's going to stick on it instead. So in terms of an example,
Yeah, so starting with ethene, we can do the, the hydrolysis or the, the actual, just getting the, al the, the alcohol at the end, so the ethanol. This is done in industry, so you need quite a big power, well, plant for this factory. Does take up a lot of fossil fuel to do it, but the ethanol, what you get at the end, is very pure and it is quick. It is a continuous process. So there are some advantages of doing it via this route. In terms of being able to recognize when you're actually turning from alkene to alcohol, or as we'll see a little bit later, you can go from alcohol to alkene, keep an eye on if water is there. If water is there, you will turn to an alcohol. If we say just had sulfuric acid in no water, you could actually turn the alcohol back into the, the alkene. So that's the, the industrial method. There is a way you can do this sort of a bit more earth friendly. And you don't need to know the mechanism of how that's done, by the way, just actually being able to know the equation, what you would get. So at GCSE, you will have come across respiration. So how the plants, when they do photosynthesis, and they actually make glucose. So there we go, glucose being made there. So two, three, four, five, six, pentahydroxyhexanal. Glucose, much easier. Now, this can be fermented. So by fermenting, we need a few things. First off, yeast. So yeast is a little almost fungi style thing. It's not actually the, the catalyst itself. It's the stuff in yeast, the zymase in yeast. But just write yeast, much easier. Um, so it just eats the actual glucose, digests it, breaks it down, you get the, the ethanol produced at the end. Now because of this, with it being a living organism, then you can't heat it up too high. You would denature it. Do not say kill it. You say denature. So too low of a temperature, well the reaction's too slow, too low, de too low denatures it as well, or too high denatures. So don't say kill, you'll not get a mark. So temperature around 35 Celsius. So similar to your internal body temperature, that's what it works best as. Ah, no air, keep it out. The reason, as we will see, we're trying to make an alcohol here. So the alcohol useful for the fuels. Alcohols do oxidize in air. So if ever you um, buy a cheap bottle of wine or something like that, and you leave it out too long, it will begin oxidizing. So it'll turn to the aldehyde, and then eventually it'll start smelling like vinegar. So, fermentation, we get ethanol and carbon dioxide. One of the, the actual questions which ties in with this is sort of how friendly is it in terms of being carbon neutral? Now, carbon neutral you should be able to define. It means no net carbon is emitted to the atmosphere. You must get in that to the atmosphere part. So it's not just no net carbon lying about, it's no net carbon emitted to the atmosphere or no net carbon dioxide, whichever you wish, but the carbon's the key part, hence carbon neutral. Now the ethanol coming from this way is classed as a biofuel, so it's a fuel derived from a plant source. So obviously we're getting these from the actual plants, so the rape seeds, the things like that which they actually grow, harvest them, and then chuck them in a big pot with the yeast and do the fermentation. So why these are useful? 
we can burn it. So instead of the fossil fuels, which are obviously non-renewable, you can regrow plants. So we've got a renewable source of fuel. Now you'll see in a second why I've got the two there. It's just to demonstrate a point. So combustion, we are burning in oxygen. So standard products, complete combustion, similar with the alkanes, the alkenes, things like that. You get carbon dioxide and water, so balance them. So notice four, because I've got two lots of ethanol being burnt. So six twenty four. Now what it tries to get across is the fact that it's carbon neutral. So notice up here we took in six carbon dioxides. If you add them up here, we've released two and then released four when we burnt all of the ethanol. So not just one of it, all of it. So the carbon dioxides perfectly cancel each other out. Again, no net CO2 emitted to the atmosphere. However, it's not as simple as that. I could ask you to sort of prove that or advantages, disadvantages against it. Yes, the actual process doesn't release CO2, but where do you get all this from? Fields. You need to transport the actual glucose to your factories. So there will be CO2 emitted by the actual lorries. Even when you've made the ethanol, it needs to be transported, say, from Brazil to the UK. So ships trans transporting it across the ocean. So CO2 will still be emitted. Um, in terms of this process, fermentation, compared to the industrial one, which you've just seen before, with this being done in just a big vat with the yeast and waiting for it, it will not give you pure ethanol, typically only around 15%. The reason why is obviously use ethanol in, say, the hand washers. The alcohol actually kills microorganisms. So at too high of a concentration, it kills the yeast. So you'll only get about 15% and then you need to distill it off. Also, it's quite slow since we can't heat it up any higher, otherwise it denatures the yeast and it's a batch process you just basically got a big vat, vat, vat of it you've just got to wait till it's done chuck it out start again so some of the reactions of the alcohols oxidation So a primary alcohol, so the primary there, can be oxidised to an aldehyde and then further oxidised to a carboxylic acid. Secondary will just be oxidised to a ketone, does not go any further. And tertiary alcohols are resistant to oxidation. Now what we use as our oxidising agent when we're doing the actual tests for these So acidified potassium dichromate, you can use the words if you want, so the sulfuric acid there acting as a catalyst, so that's the acidified part, the potassium dichromate, this is the stuff doing the oxidation. So this stuff, it starts orange and when it's oxidised something it turns green. So if you want to do a test, say if you've got two samples, one's a secondary, one's a tertiary, you don't know which, if you chuck some of this in, nothing will happen in the tertiary sample. However, the secondary alcohol will be oxidised to the ketone. So this orange stuff will oxidise that, and in doing it will turn green as the, the oxidation states change. Uh, 
and for what these look like so this is an aldehyde when you've got the actual carbonyl group the C double bond O on the end of a chain a ketone is where it's in the middle of a chain because you should be able to see where this is linking in so a second secondary alcohol here secondary one two carbons attached so the OH there gets turned into the ketone whereas the primary alcohol the aldehyde one carbon attached turns into the aldehyde here now in terms of when this changes into a carboxylic acid there is now a carboxylic acid so again must be on the end it's that COOH as you'll sometimes see written in terms of naming this propanoic acid so prop three carbons that are single bonded to each other and then oic acid because it's carboxylic acid naming this propan 2 own you don't need to say the two in this one since it can only be on the second but good habit for future when you say get into the pence and in terms of the aldehyde what we had before there propan al so pro three carbons and single bonded to each other and then al to finish with the aldehydes in terms of if you're asked to write equations for those so say here we are starting with ethanol if I ask you to turn it into ethanol notice the way that's written as well do not write OH the OH is for an alcohol it's HO for an aldehyde you would get some water pulled off now the symbol for oxidation can just use an O in square brackets so as you will see one two hydrogens there with the O gives you the H2O in terms of the rest of the balancing two carbons and the remaining hydrogens so it's more or less just a balancing exercise you can have two O's if needed say if you were turning from an alcohol to a carboxylic things like that it's more or less just a balance and exercise for testing between the aldehydes and ketones so say if I did a secondary one and had so if I did propan 1 all and got sorry if I did propan 2 all and got this ketone if I want to test between these you use Tollens reagent now Tollens reagent is a mild oxidizing agent so it oxidizes things further as you saw previously when I did the primary secondary tertiary a ketone cannot be oxidized further so Tollens cannot do anything to it it just stays the same whereas an aldehyde can be oxidized further to a carboxylic acid so what you will see with the aldehyde is a silver mirror forms make sure to get in the mirror so silver mirror whereas the ketone nothing no change in terms of when you're doing these reactions the conditions what you need if you want to turn from a a, a primary alcohol to an aldehyde you might want to use dilute potassium dichromate and do distillation if you want to get all the way to a carboxylic acid or if you're doing your secondary alcohol to a ketone then you will reflux it so reflux high temperature temperature doesn't matter too much but put it in there so reflux high temperature and constant